uh, stand out on the market today, best performing in the ASX 200 and despite a $20 million loss. So has the stock now recovered from what happened with the, the recall? Well, a great performance for Cochlear. Uh, today, they announced a $20 million loss for the first half, yet their shares have actually risen 8% today to be the best ASX 200 performer. So really affected by the $100 plus million dollar, uh, cost from this recall they had to make last year on their, on their implants. Um, ignoring retail uh, recall costs, their profits actually came in around $80 million. It was slightly down on the previous corresponding period, but it was above expectations. Uh, so looking forward for, for Cochlear, it appears that their supply problems have been somewhat resolved with the manufacturing ramp up and their device failure reports have been declining each month. Uh, it now does look like a total of around 2.4% of, de of the affected devices have been reported as faulty. Uh, so for Cochlear, looking forward, uh, certainly there's some risks. Uh, Renew competition from Sonova, um, another producer of implants. Uh, slowing healthcare funding would certainly uh, be a dampener on Cochlear. They do have strong cash flows, however. Uh, they are a defensive stock in the healthcare sector, uh, but they certainly do have growth aspects as well. The Australian dollar has certainly been weighing on healthcare stocks lately. Cochlear do make a large amount of revenue overseas, so a high Australian dollar is a certainly an anchor for Cochlear. Uh, Cochlear. Uh, they did manage to grow revenues around 3%. That was during the time that they we were recalling their, their products. So that was a good result, and that's probably what's driving the market higher today. A really good result, 8% uh, 8 uh, 8 gain for Cochlear today. Now, it's been interesting watching what uh, has happened to NAB shares and, and also Macquarie too, but I mean, that they seem to be dragging on the whole financial sector as a whole of falls we're seeing uh, at the moment. NAB coming out warning about its underperforming UA, UK operations, it's going to review those and warning about conditions being challenging uh, with this first quarter cash profit there. Uh, should the market be concerned about NAB's margins? Well, the market looks a bit concerned today. Uh, the shares are down around 3%. That was despite 7.7% rise uh, in their first quarter profits. Uh, they banked a cash profit around $1.4 billion, but that was a little bit below expectations. Uh, with a rate cut coming up today, uh, on the same day that they announce a 7.7% increase in profits, certainly going to be hard to justify not passing on a rate cut in full to the public. But uh, what has been disappointing the market today for NAB has been uh, their narrowing margins, certainly a rise in bad loans, and of course this ongoing problem with their UK business. Uh, the market does seem to be a little bit uneasy about NAB's narrowing margins. Given that they do have a large dependence on offshore wholesale funding, NAB is the, does have the second largest dependence of uh, offshore funding out of the big four banks. It accounts for around 60% of their wholesale funding costs. Uh, so certainly net interest margins have decreased. I mean, they peaked in 2008 up above 9.2%. Uh, they came back last year, they were peaking around 6.97%. Currently, they're down around 6.4% for uh, NAB, that's their wholesale funding costs. Uh, so Euro uncertainty, of course, is going to be playing into funding wholesale cost concerns for NAB, and uh, their, their, narrow, their margins may well come under a little bit of further pressure this year. Now, considering NAB's competitive strength is within its domestic uh, retail and banking business, it is certainly about time they uh, had a serious look at their UK banking business. Just more broadly looking at the market, does it seem to be in a bit of a holding pattern, just hanging out for the RBA decision in under an hour now? It does seem a little bit that way. We've seen a bit of volume go through stocks such as NAB and Macquarie Group that did release results this morning. But it does seem to be that the market is killing a bit of time before 2.30pm where we will see uh, the RBA re announce its rates decision. Uh, if you look at the chart behind me, you can actually see the Australian markets just just drifted higher over the morning session, up about a third of a percent now, and a bit of a move into sort of more defensive sectors. Uh, certainly the materials having a uh, weighing on the market today. We only had sort of weak to modest leads from offshore. Uh, Greece continues to frustrate global markets with their disagreement around the austerity, needs, uh, austerity measures needed to secure their next ba bailout pay, uh, payment. Uh, but certainly sectors such as the utilities being driven uh, higher, healthcare, telecoms today performing well, energy stocks also up, oil price fell overnight but it's actually been rising during Asian trade today. Uh, some of the u uh, uranium producers and stocks today are performing quite well, Paladin and extract resources. So that's helping the energy sector grow higher. We saw the ASX 200 actually break above 
4,300 points today. That's about the highest level since early December 2011. So that's a good point. It's heading towards its 200 day moving average, but it's still got a little bit of a way to go to reach that. Uh, the market's certainly looking for a rate cut this afternoon. Economists are expecting that the RBA will cut by 25 basis points. The market would like this. It would have a dampening effect on the Australian dollar, which has been holding the Australian market back, certainly affecting our exporters and companies that make large earnings offshore. So this week we'll be certainly watching all of the earnings to come out. BHP, a big one tomorrow. And of course, how this Greece situation pans out. Tim, thank you so much for the update. Thanks, Bridie.